In 2007, two iconic titans of horror stalked their own house at Halloween Horror Nights 17, Carnival of Carnage. This year, they're being placed in the same house. The body count shall rise as each tries to stake their claim to the title of Best Serial Killer. The maze itself won't be just one or the other. Oh no, it shall be both. And it will be broken up into thirds. First, we enter the iconic location of Camp Crystal Lake. And we see all of the iconic kills of Jason Voorhees throughout the series and also in the movie of the same name of the house itself. And then, I'm guessing a little hypnosil would be in order. Because we're going to be transitioning to 1428 Elm Street as we go delving into the realm, the nightmares of Freddy Krueger. His iconic kills throughout the series and the movie of the same name as The House, including the infamous Boiler Room which has already pretty much been leaked out that it's going to be a part of this house given concept art on the Jax Maniacs section of the Halloween Horror Nights Orlando website. Who will win? See, that's where it gets fun. Because every time you go through this house, there's a very good possibility you may see a different conclusion. Maybe Freddy stands tall with Jason laying on the ground. Or maybe, just maybe, you are fortunate enough to see the iconic imagery of Jason in victory holding Freddy's severed head. Of course it'll wink at us. Why wouldn't it? That's how it works in the movie. But in this end, there can only be one true winner. And that's us fans. Freddy's coming. He's not coming alone. It's Freddy vs. Jason at Halloween Horror Nights 25. So, yes, this announcement was made the other day. Made official that Freddy vs. Jason is the first maze at Halloween Horror Nights 25. Now, using the word maze doesn't really fit. Why? Because... This is not a share. There has been a lot of speculation throughout the speculation process that this was going to be shared with Hollywood. It is not. John Murdy himself has gotten a lot of personal flack on Twitter because of not deciding to grab this IP that the fans definitely want and leaving it for another year. He said himself he could get the rights anytime he wants to. And this has led to a huge fan backlash in Hollywood why John Why? Well, well, think about it this way. Freddy and Jason have been a part of the Hollywood event for three times. Now, some of them were consecutive, some of them were apart. Still, three times. So we've seen Freddy and Jason in Hollywood before. Never at the same time. Now, this was supposed to happen before, and it fell through. Now, Orlando got it to line up. And this will also lead to Hollywood getting it down the line, depending on how well it does in Orlando. Now, we should have seen the signs. Should have easily seen the signs that Freddy was coming back to the event. I said so in November. I called this house in November. I'm very proud to say that. And I'm, if you believe any of the rumors of this list that exists, I called a lot of this stuff in November. But that's just because, use my old noggin there. So, basically, we should have known it was coming. 2012, Resident Evil Escape from Raccoon City. We saw the Elm Street sign. 2013, 2012. I think there was actually something in the house in 2012, but I'm not positive. Sorry about that. Last year, we saw the iconic red and green sweater in the closet in Halloween. And the promotion for The Walking Dead, which apparently got me possessed by Wade Barrett ended up announcing don't sleep and there was fire in the instagram videos leading people that were not in the know to believe that freddie was coming back now it's official
100% official. And could we see scenes from Camp Blood for Friday the 13th from 17? Or from Dreamwalkers from 17 as well? I think it's a possibility. Are we going to see characters we know and love from the series? I'm sure we probably will. Will we see kills from Freddy vs. Jason? I guarantee this. I said a long time ago on several podcasts with the Horror Nights updaters, as well as my own Halloween Horror Nights podcast, this will not be Freddy vs. Jason, the movie as you know it. This is going to be Freddy vs. Jason utilizing a unique story that is going to tie in a lot of the franchise throughout the years, and it's going to have some several iconic things from the Freddy vs. Jason film. Now, there's several things that jump to my mind that I think we're going to see. Like Jason's sleeping bag kill, I love so much. It is awesome, and I can't wait to see it. Jason at the rave. When Kelly Rowland's character, Keo, was taunting, and of course she ended up, well, she's no longer living. Her character is no longer of this world. And Jason, of course, folding the guy in half with the bed. I thought that was awesome. So, yes, we're going to get to see Camp Crystal Lake and 1428 Elm Street and the Boiler Room, and I'm sure we'll see the rave. We have to see it, honestly. Stuff probably from Camp Blood, stuff probably from Dreamwalkers. I think it's a good possibility. This is going to be an awesome house for fans of the series. There's going to be Easter eggs. And I very much look forward to this inclusion in the Unmasking the Horror Tour so I can see all these Easter eggs and get plenty of photos with this wonderful thing that I haven't started filming with yet. But it's awesome, isn't it? It's the first time I've shown my iPhone 6 on camera. Looks great, doesn't it? Looks a lot like what I've got currently filming on. But, <laughs> isn't it? Let's talk about a couple other things. My other brothers in horror... First, being Tristan, HHN fan 16, his thoughts. He's not shocked that it's not coming in Hollywood, but he's not exactly not believing it either. Like, he can't believe this isn't coming. He's not shocked, but he still can't believe. But he still can believe that it isn't. So, he said to keep an open mind about the event. Totally understand that. Don't hate John Murdy because he can't do a particular IP. Freddy vs. Jason won't come to Hollywood eventually, probably sooner rather than later. He mentioned the possibility of Freddy and Jason appearing in a different form, or maybe utilizing some of the other slashers, like Michael Myers, who I'm pretty positive is going to be one of the focal points in Hollywood this year. The Indian giver clue we talked about a while back. He mentioned American Horror Story, which I never see coming in the event. Trick or Treat, which I think next year is the year. Stephen King, which allows so much red tape that I'm not even sure we'll get Stephen King in any form until after he's no longer of this earth as well. I mean, I, I think even then, I, I would probably say his estate would probably make it impossible to actually do a house. Maybe Jack coming to Hollywood too? Mm, I doubt it. Murray didn't seem like icons. Alien or Aliens, I think that will happen eventually. Sinister, I think that's a really good bet for either this or next year. Insidious, uh, very well could easily be a share. And uh, the wild card being Rob Zombie's 31. So, John, Psycho Masker Films, totally marks out on camera. And that's awesome. It's his number one most anticipated house of this year. And he's surprised it's not coming to Hollywood. But it's because they've been there three times prior. And that Titans of Horror line that I use at the beginning, complete credit to him for coming up with that. It's a total brilliant line. Now here is where I stand. We are going to see a different ending. Not exactly every time. I don't think that's possible. Unless we do a dual run, and that's not going to happen. I would say, based upon just guesstimating... Maybe we're going to get... Obviously, you have cast A and cast B in all the houses. That's usually how it works. Spoiler alert. I probably already know this if you're watching these videos. And I'd say one cast would be a Freddy wins and one cast would be a Jason wins. It's basically already been said that when Jason wins, he's going to have Freddy's decapitated head in his hand. When Freddy wins, I have a feeling he's just going to cut promos on everybody and uh, just scare everyone. I think it'd be fun. Now, here's the thing. Who do I like want to win? 
Now, Freddy, obviously Robert England, I love the comedic stylings of the earlier movies, and it got a little bit more darker as we progressed, and then it got into, like, weird territory with, like, a new nightmare, which I did like, into stuff like Freddy vs. Jason. Jason, on the other hand, I've always said this a long time ago, Jason is right to censor. He fights the good fight. He kills all the couples. <laughs> Anybody that knows me personally probably laughing out loud when I say that. So, yeah, he's fighting the good fight. Jason is probably the one I want to see win here, and Jason could basically bane Freddy anytime he wants. So, I'm really curious to see how this house is going to look. I'm curious to see what the sets are going to be like the second we walk into the soundstage, which I'm going to guess based upon the permit listing. There was a rumor this was going to be a 25, where The Walking Dead was last year. I think this is going to be a 21, which we haven't seen used at the event for a while. I believe the last time we've seen it was in 2013, when it was shared between, I think, Resident Evil and Cabin in the Woods, if I remember correctly. Don't have that information in front of me. I think that's correct, though. But yeah, I'm really curious to see how this goes. Should be fun. Should be really fun. Now, obviously with the announcement of the first house, which is not The Walking Dead, even though I truly said that this will make The Walking Dead not the focal point of the event this year. And it's not going to be. It's just going to be a house, and that's it. That's all it is. It'll probably be marketed a bit, but it's not going to be as heavy as it normally is. I think Freddy vs. Jason is your head IP this year, and I think that makes perfect sense. He can be... Basically, Freddy can, and Jason can be part of Jack's Maniacs. I thought it would be a great idea to utilize that Jack's Maniacs um, location for the teaser video, which we had the introduction of Jack, and bringing out the different Maniacs from the different houses, and I think that would be great, but they haven't gone that path. I, maybe I gave them too much credit. Who knows? It was a good idea in my head. Another thing. The announcement of ticket prices has made the announcement official that the conversation I had with Brian of Orlando United has come to fruition. No more midnight closures. Midnight is done. No more midnight at Halloween Horror Nights. If you're at Halloween Horror Nights at midnight, you still have either one or two hours left. Because, as of this moment, it is official, Halloween Horror Nights 25 will have theme park closures at 1 and 2 a.m. And if you're curious, the 1 a.m. closings will be on September 18th, the 29th, mm, excuse me, the 24th and the 27th, October 4th, 1st, 7th, 14th, 21st, 28th through 31st, and November 1st. Now, 2 a.m., they will be closing those special peak nights, October 2nd and 3rd, 8th through the 11th, 15th to the 18th, and the 22nd to the 25th. So let's talk about tickets, shall we? As I have my notes in front of me here. Halloween Horror Nights tickets. A one-day ticket. You don't have a park admission or anything. You're just coming over to Halloween Horror Nights. That's all you're going to do. Go to the event. $102. This all includes, does not include sales tax, just like the new Regal prices. They don't include sales tax. This is plus tax. $102. It is a $6 jump from last year. We added an extra house. Some more stuff in the streets. Okay, I get it. If you already have park admission, add-on tickets are the way to go. Now for September 24th and 27th, October 1st, 4th, 7th through the 8th, 11th, 28th, 29th, and November 1st, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. October 14th, 15th, 18th, 21st, 22nd, and 25th, 54 bucks. September 18th and 25th, October 2nd, 9th, and 30th, $61. October 16th and 23rd, $65. And finally, September 19th and 26th, October 3rd, 10th, 17th, 24th, and Halloween, $77. talk express passes. Express passes seem to be a godsend. Express passes for particular nights are as followed. There is a $20 jump from the previous year's price based upon what the dates would have been in actuality lining up. September 18th and 19th, the 24th, the 25th, and 27th, October 1st and 7th, $70 for Express. 
which is that rumored after 10 Express that they didn't even mention here. So if that's either put to bed or that's going to be something that's going to stay a hey, shh, shh, don't tell anyone. <clears throat> September 26th, October 4th, 8th, 14th, 21st, 28th, and November 1st, $80. October 15th and 29th, $90. October 2nd, 3rd, 11th, 18th, 24th, sorry, 22nd, my bad, 22nd, 25th, 30th, and Halloween, $100. If you go on October 9th, $110. If you go on October 10th, 16th, 17th, 23rd, and 24th, $120. Welcome to Hell Week, folks. Express will be utilized in droves, but it may be cut down a bit because of the pricing, which is going to help us out just a little bit, the people like me that don't use Express. But the most bang for your buck, without a doubt, is the frequent fear passes. All right? There's the rush of fear, which covers the first 10 days of the event outright, and it is $84 for a regular ticket and $73 if you're an annual pass holder. Great deal. Now, if you want to add Express to a rush of fear, it's $220 if you're a regular ticket and the Express is $209 if you're an annual pass holder. Right. That's like a $10 difference, basically. Frequent fear itself is $95 and $84 if you're an annual pass holder. If you want to add Express to your frequent fear, it's $235 for a regular ticket, but if you're an annual pass holder, it's going to be $224, so it saves you a little bit of money. Now, there's the Frequent Fear Plus. Frequent Fear basically is Sunday through the Thursday. Frequent Fear Plus adds Fridays to the event. There's still no ticket that adds Saturday, so if you want to go on Saturday, you basically have to pay the one-day ticket price, which I'm going to have to do on, on Halloween this year, it appears. <laughs> oh, well, I should I've known going into this. But that's okay. I'm fine with that. The plus is $111. If you're a pass holder, it's $99. This is, like I said, all plus tax. If you want to add Express to your frequent flavor plus, it is $280. But if you're a pass holder, it's only $268. Wow. Your add-on tickets if you're an annual pass holder saves you a little bit of money from a regular ticket. If you look at September 24th or 27th, October 1st or 4th, $46. That's the ticket uh, my mother actually has now, thanks to uh, us purchasing these tickets yesterday. September 18th and 25th, as well as October 2nd, is $47. 19th and 26th of September, plus October 3rd, $53. October 7th, 8th, 11th, 28th, 29th, and November 1st, $50. October 14th, 15th. 18th, 21st, 22nd, and 25th is $54. October 9th and 30th, $61. October 16th and 23rd, $65. And October 10th, 17th, 24th, and Halloween, $77. This also includes some really good deals, obviously, for annual pass holders. Florida resident deals, I'm not going to really cover on this. I don't really have that information, so I'm not going to cover it. Now... There's the tours. You have the basic RIP tour, which lets you visit the RIP lounge with a cash bar, VIP access to all the houses and the park attractions. And if you finish the tour in time for before park closure, you get express pass for the actual rides that are operating during the event. Reserve seating at Bill and Ted and complimentary VIP parking. Now this caps at 12 people and it's going to start at 8 p.m., and it usually runs between two and four hours, I would guess, this year, given the fact there's nine houses, five scare zones, two roaming hordes, supposedly, two shows, I would say probably this will be more four. Did not run every event night last year, so keep that in mind, $110. That was last year's price. My guesstimation, based upon how inflation's going up this year, I would say it's going to go up either 10 to $20, so I think probably 10, 10 bucks more. I think you were looking at about $120 for this. Now, if you want to do a private RIP tour, it's 10 people in a group. Everything I just mentioned, but you get complimentary water and coffee after the tour and a complimentary Photo Connect star card package. Oh, sorry, $1,299, so $1,300. I think this will probably go up to close to $1,500 this year, if I had to guess. 
guesstimation. <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about here is the Unmacking the Horror Tours. Something I swear by. These are awesome. They take you in the morning at 10.30 a.m. It's called the Morning Menace Tour. You go through three houses with a tour guide. I recommend David. He's absolutely awesome. He's been my tour guide the last two years, and he's going to be my tour guide forevermore until he leaves Universal, whichever comes first. And at 2 o'clock, you can actually get into the Afternoon Abomination Tour, which hits three other houses. If you want to do both in the same day, you'll get a discount. Now, last year, it was $60 for the morning or the afternoon, and then $100 for both. This year, I think it jumps up $10, so I think we're looking at maybe $70 for morning or afternoon, and probably about $110, $115 for uh, the double shot. I also think that the reason why the prices are going up as well allows me to believe that we may be adding on more to your experience. That's right. I think there's a possibility this may end up changing the times because we're only going to hit three houses. I think you may very well may be going through four. That's right. So if there's a possibility you actually go through both tours in a day, you can get that one price and see potentially eight houses instead of six. That's just my personal speculation. I have no way of knowing if that's going to be true or not. We'll have to wait and find out because obviously we got a lot of information that still hasn't been announced yet. So that's your video today talking about Freddy vs. Jason and uh, the new ticket prices. I'll be doing a podcast later tonight with members of the Horror Nights Updaters. Psycho Massacre Films will be joining me, as well as Dr. Emmett Brown 1 and uh, the Red Steel TV. They will be joining me from HNU. Alex Show Official will be joining me, and we may have some special guests to be announced. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's coming up at 9 p.m. tonight on Pop. So uh, check that out. I'll tweet a link out to it so you guys can check that out and get to uh, watch that podcast. We're going to talk about the ticket prices and Freddy vs. Jason, get everybody's opinions. So that should be a fun time, like it always is, on these podcasts we've been doing on the regular here. And I'll do another video when we get more information on either Orlando or Hollywood or both. So that's your first official house announcement for Halloween Horror Nights 25 being Freddy vs. Jason. So, as always, if you want the actual information from the mouth of the person that is the main reason it comes together... Michael Aiello, you can check out the Horror Nights Orlando Twitter feed. It's at Horror Nights ORL. While you're there, also, while you're on Twitter, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. It's at Soro and Disney. If you want to go to Facebook, like our Facebook fan page. It's under Soro and Disney Pop. Or search for Soro and Disney and Pop. Some great forums. Like-minded individuals talking Halloween Horror Nights located at Horror Night Nightmares, as well as Orlando United and Orlando Informer. There'll be links in the description bar for those. And you check out some great uh, Halloween Horror Nights related sites. Get some info from DesigningFear.com, HHNCrypt.com, and Parkscope. So check them out as well. While you're at it, you can follow some of the awesome Halloween Horror Nights updaters. Some of my really good friends, like I call them my brothers in horror. And that would be as followed my good friend Tristan, HHN Fan 16. The Horror Nights updaters, their channel, and a collaborative, that would be Horror Nights updaters. If you want to check out their individual channels, you can check out my good friend Vic, Dr. Emmett Brown 1. My good friend Aaron, The Red Steel TV. My good friend John, Psycho Masker Films. My friend David and Crazy Englishman, my friend Neil, UKHHN, Deadly Fear 1283, and Mr. Horror Nights, as well as my friend James, HHN Updated 1, my friend Matt, HHN Trogdor, Admiral HHN, Thrill Seeker Network, Jeremy Films with double Z, so it's not just one Z, it's two Zs, uh, The Man in the Molly Vest, and View from the Cheap Seats, my good friend Kyle there, and uh, Aaron from First Class Horror. That's your video for tonight, and more information coming very soon. So until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I gotta say about that.